good morning everybody. Another beautiful sunrise. Uh, this morning I have come to a place called the Mauling, which is a nature reserve in Lewis, which is East Sussex. Now you might be thinking, Ben, that doesn't look like great conditions for landscape photography. The sun has yet to kick through the clouds. Prediction was 100% fog. They were right for once. There is fog, no doubt about it. But today I'm actually not going to be photographing landscapes. I'm in search of some butterflies. I seem to be in the middle of some sort of crater. So these cliffs around me are chalk cliffs. And I've actually previously been up to the top of that, but I took the long route from the bottom of Lewis near Caulfield Tunnel. Today I've actually parked in the official car park rather than walking through this cul-de-sac muse development. And the reason I'm not fussed about there being such hazy conditions is that when you're doing macro photography, you want diffuse light. So this is perfect. But this could go one of two ways. It could go really well and the fog creates a bit of separation for the subject, or it could be a disaster. So according to the Sussex Wildlife Trust website, today I'm looking for the Adonis blue butterfly, which looks like this. So wish me luck. But even if I don't find the butterfly today, I've got my macro lens on me and I'm very distracted by all of the flowers around me which have got water droplets on because it's really, really humid right now. As you can see, I'm just wearing a t-shirt and it's before, well, the sun has not come up. So let's sprinkle in a few photographs of macro. This place is pretty big, don't really know where to start. I feel like we need to whisper, just because we found our first butterfly. He seems to be behaving, he seems relaxed, or she, and uh, I've managed to get enough time to get some videos and put my camera on a tripod. Uh, the problem is there is a slight breeze, so you can see that the butterfly is waving back and forth, back and forth. I don't actually know what species of butterfly this is, and if it's actually the one that I'm looking for. I saw it flying, followed it, but I haven't actually seen it open its wings, so I don't know if it's the blue butterfly that I'm after. Either way, I'm happy. I've got a photograph of the butterfly, so that's a good start. Uh, I'm going to carry on taking some photographs of this. And then I'm going to go back to a place that I've been to before to see if there are any dragonflies here. Let's crack on with the photos. Now this is not going to be a complete tutorial on macro photography. I'll put a link to my other tutorial at the end of this video. So in terms of settings, I'm using a DSLR with a 100 millimeter macro because I accidentally dropped my EOS R, my mirrorless Canon, and uh, it's currently going through an insurance claim. So if I want to use my macro lens, I'm back on the DSLR. And uh, in terms of settings, I'm shooting at F8, one four hundredth of a second, I think. Yeah, when I'm shooting stills, I'm pushing up the shutter speed because like I said, there's a light breeze and I want to capture the butterfly without any movement. So one four hundredth of a second, ISO 1000, I think, just so that I can maintain the shutter speed and the aperture. And I'm going for F8. This lens will shoot at 2.8, but the thing is when you're so close to a subject, as beautiful as F2.8 looks on the back of the camera, when you get back on the computer screen, you realize you should have closed down your aperture to get more of your subject in focus. So 2.8 works if you're further back from your subject, but as soon as you get close, you want to stop down the aperture to around 5.6 or F8. Are you one of the blue butterflies that I'm looking for? Watching that butterfly fly away 
Uh, I don't think that was actually one of the blue ones I was looking for, but a very photogenic butterfly nonetheless. Okay, let's go and see if we can find some dragonflies. So this is where maps are a little bit deceiving <laughs> because I'm just using aerial images. So I'm working my way back towards the petrol station, which is down there, which is close to where I've parked before. And according to this, I literally just got to walk along a bit and then I'm there. However, that looks like a 50 meter drop. Probably not going to be able to get to that same location from here. Well, this visibility is not helping me navigate my way around this place. Um, but there's loads to explore here, loads. Future Ben here, I have returned on a different day. Uh, this time I'm actually at the bottom of that valley that we were looking at. And what's interesting is the first time I came to Mauling Down, which was somewhere between five and 10 years ago when I captured a photograph of a dragonfly, which was literally just by the entrance. It's almost like this is a separate part of the Mauling Down because it's so steep. I'm sure you can kind of navigate that, but it's so steep. I don't think anybody would want to. So what I'll do is I'll overlay some screen recordings of Google Earth and you'll get an understanding of how steep these places are. But if you're interested in exploring the upper part of the mauling, then I'd say you want to be parking at the top car park. If you come here, be prepared to be going up and down hills quite a lot because this place is pretty contoured. When I was here earlier on in the week, I think I was at the top there. Now to get to this part of Mauling Down, you need to be close to the bottom of the hill, which is by the petrol station. And opposite that is a muse development of houses. As you're walking through there, you'll think, no, this, this can't be the right place. Because essentially you have to walk down the side alleyway of a house. It's, it's not very well signed. And uh, there's just a very thin alleyway and you'll see a gate at the end. So that's how you get to here, very odd. I remember that from years ago. This doesn't feel like the entrance to a nature reserve, but it is. If you're thinking about photographing butterflies, I think you have three options, okay? First one is the hard grafting method of coming out to a nature reserve like this and literally just being patient, enjoying the countryside. And if you see some butterflies, then great. Like most photographic subjects, the better you know your subject and their behaviors, you're probably gonna increase your chances of getting some good shots. Uh, the theory is, and I've got this from Ross Hodinot, who is an incredible macro photographer. What you would do is you come here in the evening and you'd find where a butterfly has kind of settled. And the idea is that when the sun goes down, they don't move as much. Um, because they pump blood into their wings and things like this. So if you get up early enough, they should still be there. And if you're lucky, you'll have some nice lighting conditions and maybe even a bit of dew, a bit of moisture in the air that could land on their wings and you get an incredible photograph. So that's the theory. However, I've not been here in an evening to kind of scout out exactly where the butterflies are settling for the evening. Now, the second option is to grow your own butterflies. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but I've done this with my kids a couple of times. Even if you're not into photography and you've got children, consider buying some caterpillars. You can buy them online. They post some caterpillars to you in a little pot. It's already got their food. And as we all know, they eat the caterpillar food and they build their own chrysalis. And then some butterflies arrive. So what you might end up with is about five or 10 butterflies in a net enclosure and you're allowed to keep them for a couple of days but then when it's nice and hot you release them out into the garden um, so that's another option because whilst you've got them for a couple of days you can photograph them but obviously it's not going to be in a natural environment trust me as soon as you open that net they are going to fly off so you don't have much of an opportunity and then the third option is going to a butterfly enclosure uh, i've been to a couple I've been to one in London, I've been to several based in Sussex, one in Chichester, and they vary, um, but they all have some consistencies to them. They are all temperature controlled because most of the butterflies like to live in a warm tropical environment. So if you go to one of these places, try not to switch lenses because you're gonna end up with moisture in your camera. And then the second thing is, your camera will steam up the front element of your lens and your camera screen and things. That will steam up as soon as you go into the heated environment. Um, but give it five or 10 minutes, it will calm down, it will climatize, and then you can get on with the photography. 
what I have found is when you go to these butterfly parks, the lighting is a bit off because essentially they're normally in a plastic polytunnel, they call them. Uh, sometimes they're netted, but if it's a green net that's going over the top, you get a green color cast and you have to kind of fix it in the editing. So you get a nice diffuse light, but it's a bit funky. So that's one of the downsides. Obviously, if you're photographing butterflies out here in the wild, you don't have to worry about color cast and things like that. So they are your three options if you're interested in photographing butterflies. And I have done all three. And if I had my choice, I'd probably do this. But the easiest method is to go to a butterfly park and they're almost a bit tame and you'll be confronted with hundreds of butterflies of varying species. So that's the easiest route without a doubt. It's a long way back to the car from here. Look how high up we are. Okay, good news. What I was saying earlier is not entirely correct. If you want to visit where I went to in the first half of this video versus now, you don't have to kind of separately park. I have followed the path all the way from the bottom end. I mean, it is a bit of a hike. There's no, there's no denying it. There's a bit of a hike involved, but you can follow the loop all the way around, which is essentially going around the valley. But if you just follow it all the way around, you'll end up at the other side of Mauling Down. Uh, so that's where I am at the moment. You'll see what the, the path is like over there. Beautiful sunrise happening over there. So hopefully there'll be some butterflies around here because this is where I found the butterflies last time. Uh, so I just need to stay on this path, follow it around, and then I'll be back to where I was in the first half of this video. Awesome. mission here seems to be complete. I found my first butterfly of the day. I was photographing that, quite happy actually. And whilst I was photographing that butterfly, just at the corner of my eye, one of the blue Adonis butterflies just caught my attention. And here it is. It's been very well behaved. And I've literally been photographing this for about five or 10 minutes as it kind of flies from one plant to the next. It's very small. I would say that that butterfly is about 10 to 12 millimeters wide, maybe 15 millimeters. So I know photography, I don't know masses about butterflies. So this might be a baby or this might just be a very small species, but very, very cute. Okay, I think my work here is done. That, that's made me very happy. What a great morning out. Okay, well, I think that is this location done. I know I didn't get a dragonfly, but I shall have to return Maybe I'm just here at the wrong time of year for dragonflies. If you are considering coming here and you've got any questions, then let me know in the comments down below. What I'll do is I'll provide the What Three Words location for the entrance at the bottom of the valley and the What Three Words location for the car park. There's no point in me giving you the What Three Words for here because the butterflies are going to just constantly be on the move. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.